office occupancy has been slowly ticking back up with more companies requiring employees to return to work in person. However, delinquencies are now uh, on the rise. Joining us is Scott uh, Reckler, who's the uh, RXR Realty Chairman and CEO. Good morning to you. What, what's happening here? Good morning, Andrew. Good to be here. So, I mean, I think in terms of just office, yep. you know, one of the things that's been happening is everyone's been painting office with the same brush. And I've been saying for quite some time that there's Class A office that's going yep. to continue to do well. We're seeing people demand people back to the offices. And then there's Class B office um, or lower grade Class A that effectively is going to become competitively obsolete. Well, we've seen an uptick in tenants, just which is, I think, a good indicator of people coming back to the office. So just this month, we've signed a million square feet of leases, and that's in, you know, Rock Center, right. Midtown South, Grand Central area. And those are where places where people want to be. They're high-quality buildings, high-quality locations. So what happens to all the other places? I mean, it's a challenge, right? And I think that is something that we're going to have to, you know, try to address because we talk about these conversions. There's only so much of these conversions that can happen. Hard to do a conversion it's well hard to do in a terms conversion. of going from office to, well, to the apartments, first thing you do especially is, given where the elevators and everything often well, you, are. You can physically do them in lots of buildings, but the trick is you need the prices to come down significantly, right? So we're having a repricing, and really to make this work, you need to be talking $200, $250 a foot to be able to buy an office building and invest it and right. to convert it and still make a decent return on that conversion, right? But, you know, I think there is an investment opportunity. I mean, just ourselves, over the last, uh, you know, a few months right now, we've made commitments right. on over $1.2 billion of equity and 5 million square feet of office building. Okay, so but have. all of these folks who are, so there's people obviously going to those uh, Class A buildings. All the folks in the Class B buildings, what are they doing? They just decide they're not going to the office anymore? I mean, I don't understand. Well, well and again, it's, some are still going. But if you really think about it, if you're trying to attract your workforce back to the offices and you want to collaborate, you want to be in places that have energy, that have uh, you know, amenities, places where people can gather together, you want them to be in neighborhoods that are places that are exciting and restaurants and bars. So you, know, you want to create an environment that is compelling. Class B, dark buildings, bad infrastructure, bad light, bad air. People don't want to be in those buildings. We have uh, the Wall Street Journal front page today. Wall Street moves to buy properties at bargain prices, raising funds, trying to find, I guess, distressed properties. Are sellers at this point in that mode of, look, we're going to have to take the pain, and, and that will maybe mop up the market a bit? Yeah, so, I mean, I think we're starting to see it. Um, you know, I think that the banks have been very slow. We're starting to see ourselves. We are, have invested about $2.5 billion on high-yield credit and we call it office recovery strategy right now. And we're able to now buy mezzanine loans at discounts. We're having conversations with banks and institutions of buying their interest at big discounts. I think the, the smart uh, institutions right now realize that if they're, they get there quicker, they have a better chance right. of getting a price because as more inventory comes on, prices are going to drop okay. further. Roll this story forward, though, because one of the things everyone's worried about, and we're talking about this pitch downgrade of the banks and everything else, is what this does to both the regional banks and maybe even some of the larger banks come 24, come 25, as you say, if, if everybody wants to convert these buildings, but they're only going to do it when these prices are much lower, someone's going to take a haircut in a big way. Yeah, no, and I think, I think there's going to be losses at the bank level, right? There's going to be losses at the investors level. And I think for the you know, cities, right, they're going to have this potential, this urban doom loop, right? There was an article about San Francisco and, you know, valuations coming down 50 percent and people asking for real estate tax reductions, right, for that amount. So what's that do to municipal budgets? What's it do to local businesses? So that's a challenge. But I will say, when it comes to regional banks, it's not about office buildings. The Achilles heel on regional banks is multifamily. Um, that is really where it's spread throughout the Why entire Why do you country. say that when we've seen, for the most part, multifamily has actually stay, stayed remarkably stable? We've obviously seen rents go, uh, go up, but, right. that, you know. Well, because what's happened was you had record levels of multifamily investment in 2021 into 2022. People were buying multifamily, saying, okay, rents are going to go up. I'm buying with interest rates that are low. I'm buying with interest with low cap rates. And what's happened is the opposite. Rents have pretty much stayed flat. Interest rates have spiked and cap rates have gone up. So values have come down. So if someone bought a multifamily building for $250 million, even if they put $100 million of equity in today, they'll have to write off half of that equity and invest another $50 million to refinance it. That's spread throughout the entire country. And that's where the regional banks have significant exposure today. And, and on top of that, you have you supply. You don't think it's, it's not office that you think is going to... I'm not saying office isn't going to be the issue, but if you look at the amount of loans around the country, the biggest segment by two times is multifamily. And that's also really spread throughout the country and been financed by the regional banks. So the bigger banks and some of the you know, CMBS market have the office buildings. But when you really think about the regional banks, 
that's where they're at. And I think regional banks are going to have challenges. I know we just saw the downgrade. I, I would say I would not be surprised if there's a 500 to 1,000 less regional banks in the next two years. Okay, final question. If we're sitting around this table three years from now, what do you think the average number of days somebody comes into work? I, I think the three to four is, I mean, hybrid works here to stay, right? I mean, I, you know, I think that's a given people like flexibility, but I don't think this concept of full remote work works. I think everyone has sort of come to that conclusion. You know, you've seen it with Zoom, you've seen it with others right now. And so, but I think hybrid work is a good balance. Right. And so three to four days is what's going to happen, I think, long term. Okay.